welcome back students in this video we will continue to do problems involving faraday's law and lenz's law now that uh, we know both the faraday's law and the lenz's law let's start doing some problems involving both of them let me take example 6.1 it says consider experiment 6.2 what would you do to obtain a large deflection of the galvanometer that is a question so first of all let's see what is experiment 6.2 hello this is example 6.1 experiment 6.2 uh, the figure 6.2 is like this you have this coil connected to a galvanometer and then you have another coil which had a steady current flowing in it so we so this will produce a magnetic field okay and uh, you know as you bring it towards this As you bring it towards this, then there is an EMF induced, and uh, since this is closed, the galvanometer will uh, show a deflection because there is a change in magnetic field that flows into this coil too. Okay. Uh, so the question now is, what would you do to obtain a large deflection of the galvanometer? So one thing would be the first thing that you can do to get large deflection is. to get okay when would the galvanometer deflect when a current flows through this, flows through this circuit and if the current is more the deflection will be more the current is less the deflection will be less if the current has to be more then what should happen then the emf generated should also be more the induced emf should be more to make more current flow through the circuit and we know this the induced emf of e is equal to minus d phi b by dt so if we the uh, flux through this changes at a faster rate then induced emf will be more if induced emf is more then the current that flows through this coil will also be more because we can expect the resistance of this coil to remain the same the temperature doesn't change the resistance is going to remain the same so more emf will produce more current and more current will give you more deflection so the greater deflection in the galvanometer so how do you do that one one thing which you can do is you can bring it faster You can move this coil faster towards this coil, or we take it away from this coil faster. In that case, the change in the flux will happen in quick time. So d phi will remain the same, but d t will be smaller because we are doing it at a faster rate. So then e can be greater. So move. I'll call this as coil one, and then I'll call this as coil two. So move. coil 2 faster towards the right either we will get a large deflection in both directions that is one thing which can do and what is the other thing which can do if the current that is flowing through this coil is more then the field strength will be more and that field strength will change more right like if if you have some field strength now it have a different field strength if the current that is flowing through is more and as you take it away that change will be more in the sense that that uh, from point 1 tesla to zero is not the same as uh, you know uh, uh, 
was like 10 Tesla to, to zero at the same time. So if the current is moved, the field strength of this will be moved, so there will be a lot more flux here. So as you take it away, then a lot more flux will change. So the change will be more if the current through this is more. So connect a, a, a stronger battery to V. If V is greater, if V in coil 2 is strong, stronger, the, the battery stronger, and then the deflection or the attraction. So V in coil 2 is stronger. Okay? V is, I say, battery. So this is strong, then you will be then correct stronger. The I will be greater. I will be greater. If I will, if I is greater, then field will be greater. Then the change in the field center will also be greater. So that is the second option that you can take. And what's the third option? The third option is even for the same I, you can you can increase the magnetic field by placing a ferromagnetic material inside. If you, if you keep a soft iron core in this, let's say we have a soft iron core, you remember we said that the magnetic field will increase many fold. So without even changing the current, if we just put the soft iron core inside, then the field strength increases because the domains in this uh, soft iron core will align with this. So the, effectively, it will produce a much larger magnetic field. So the magnetic flux here will also increase. And as you move it away and move it closer, then clearly the rate of change of flux will be greater. So the EM of induced in this coil will be greater. And if the EM of induced in this coil is going to be greater, then the deflection will also be greater because the current through the coil will be greater. So the third option is to put a heap of a soft iron core. In coil two. You keep it here and face into the inverse. Or you can also keep a soft hand for here too. That can also happen, but, but mainly let me keep it here so that you can increase the magnetic field. Yes. And as you bring it closer, then you know you have much stronger magnetic field. Yeah. So much stronger magnetic field implies that much greater magnetic flux. Much greater magnetic flux implies that much greater magnetic flux change in the coil and much greater magnetic flux change in place, but much greater EMF. Much greater EMF implies that much greater current, much greater current implies that much greater deflection. So this is how we do this problem. So let's do it. example 6.2. The problem is this. A square loop of side 10 cm and resistance 0.5 ohm is placed vertically in the east-west plane. A uniform magnetic field of 0.1 tesla is set up across the plane in the northeast direction. The magnetic field is decreased to zero in 0.7 seconds at a steady rate. Determine the magnitudes of induced EMF and current during this time interval. Okay. So as I stand here, this is my east, that's my west. This is my north and this is my south. So the problem says that you are going to have a a square 
loop like this i don't have a square loop so let me use this so this is this is a imagine that this is a square loop it's not square obviously i'll probably keep it like this okay so you have a so this is a square loop and it is hung in sketch in the east west plane so this is east this is west so this is a plane east west plane is this so i have kept it like this you can see this right so like this is the east west plane and the magnetic field is in the north east direction so this is north and this is east so the magnetic field is in this direction in this direction i hope you are able to see this is north this is east so it is in this direction so i have kept it like this so the field is in this direction and this field has certain strength and it is brought to zero the field is changing the field is changing it is brought to zero in 0.7 seconds so in that case yeah it is brought to zero steadily at a steady rate it is point it's brought to zero in 0.7 seconds so they ask you to find the emf induced in this loop because the magnetic field is changing and the flux is changing so emf will be generated if the emf is generated through this loop then since it's a closed loop you have a current flowing through this and i want you to find both okay um, so that's the problem in 6.2 so let me draw it like this this is the plane okay so this is the plane draw it like this and this will be the normal curve okay so the the field is like this The magnetic field is not at a so northeast mean is forty five degrees, right? So you are keeping it like this. The plane is like this. This is northeast direction in which the magnetic field is. So the angle between the plane, the normal of the plane, and uh, the magnetic field is forty five degrees. So the magnetic field is like this, some parallel. Okay, everything else is parallel. Okay. So magnetic field goes through this. Right. So you can see that the angle is forty degrees between the normal and. So what is the flux through this? The flux through this is given by magnetic flux through this is given by. B dot A. We also said B dot A at normal. Okay, so that is equal to B A cos theta. So what is B? B in this case is B in this case is point one Tesla. B is equal to point one Tesla. And uh, this is ten centimeters is equal to point one meter. So same thing. Point one meter. So what is the so what is it be? B equal to point one Tesla, and area is point one. Into point one, ten power minus two meter square. So this is equal to ten power minus one Tesla. So we got that. So cos theta is cos forty five. So cos forty five is the degree is equal to 
1 by root 2. So can I calculate the flux very easily? So phi d is equal to d a cos theta which is equal to 10 power minus 1 tesla multiplied by 10 power minus 2 meter square multiplied by 1 by root 2. So, what's the flux? Initial flux is equal to at the time 0, the flux is 10 power minus 3 by root 2. The unit for flux is Weber's. Okay? We should not talk about it so far. So Weber's is a unit for flux. Or you can say that B is area Tesla and then this is ampere is this area is meter square. So Tesla meter square is one number. You can do that too. So this is it. Next. What is the EMF induced? The EMF induced is equal to minus B phi B by B T. Notice that the, the, the okay, bit minus here, but here d phi b by dt, it is that's the rate of change of magnetic flux. It is changing at a constant rate. So, so if I, I can straight away, if it is changing at a constant rate, then the average rate of change will be equal to the instantaneous rate of change. We know that like this. So it's like this, right? So I have time here and then I have B here. We start from point one, point one, and then time point seven seconds, then it's coming to zero. It's constant rate of change. Okay? So instantaneous value will be the same as the average value. Because it is changing constantly. So the slope is going to be the same everything. So that's what I mean. So, instead of using d, um, d phi b by dt, then I am going to use as delta phi b by delta t. It will be the same, it's changing the constant rate. So, that is equal to, what is my final? My final is 0. My flex. My, what is delta? This is delta final minus uh, phi final minus phi initial divided by changing time. Okay. Uh, that would be time zero time final I'm sorry time initial. So this is going to be what is my final uh, flex zero because it's going from here to zero. So that would be so that would be minus of zero minus initial flex is this ten power minus three by root two. That's my numerator. What's my denominator? My final time is 0.7, initial time is 0, so I'm going to be 0 0.7 minus 0. So that will result in uh, 10 power minus 3 by root 2 multiplied by 0 0.7. So that's my number. Notice this. What is this going to be? Root 2 into 0 0.7 is 1.414 multiplied by 0 0.7 and that would be 1 approximately because 0.7 is 1 by root 2 approximately so this will become 1 so I will get 10 power minus 3 volts or 1 milli volt so from 0 to 0.7 you will have a constant voltage of 1 milli volt but after this becomes 0 then you wouldn't have it so if you were to draw the EMF curve, 
be like this 0 0.7 so I will have E so and I have 1 millivolt and become 0 after this so you will have a constant voltage from 0 to 0.7 This is going to be equal to one minute. One minute. Okay. Um, now, what's the current? So the current is decided by the the, the resistance in the circuit, right? The resistance of this loop is given to be 0.5 ohm. So the resistance is given as 0.5 ohm. So the current is equal to voltage induced divided by resistance. So that would be 1 millivolt by 0.5 ohm so that is going to be equal to 2 milliampere so that is the current that will be flowing through this so if I take this this loop and uh, if I place it in a magnetic field which is in this direction not perpendicular okay, it is not aligned with the normal it is at 45 degrees to the to the loop and if I reduce this field from 0.1 to 0 notice there is no relative motion the, the, the flux is changing the, that's enough that's the main thing the flux must flux through this loop must change either you move something or you don't move it doesn't matter if the flux through this is changing then an EMF will be generated so that is what the first three experiments we talked about in the previous videos tell us so if the flux is changing from 0 0.7 to 0 then there is going to be an EMF induced. If there is an EMF induced since it is a closed loop then there will be current flowing and the amount of current is given by the EMF induced divided by the resistance of that loop. So you get that. So this is how you do this problem. And let us do uh, example 6.3 and it says this for a circular coil of radius 10 cm, 500 turns and resistance 2 ohms is placed with its plane perpendicular to the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field. It is rotated about its vertical diameter through 180 degree in 0.25 seconds. Estimate the magnitudes of the EMF and current induced in the coil. Horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the place is 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. So, uh, this is also a, a fairly easy problem to do. Okay, what is given here? That you have a, a circular coil of certain number of turns, and that is uh, that, that is that the plane of it is perpendicular to the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field. Now you are rotating it about its vertical diameter 180 degrees in 0.25 seconds. So you have the coil like this. Suppose the earth's magnetic com component is like that, like this. Now you are turning it 180 degrees like this. Okay. And in that case, uh, can you find the uh, uh, EMF, the average EMF generated and if you can find the EMF, average EMF generated then find the current in that average current through that coil. So that is very uh, easy to do. So that is what are the zero points. The radius, this is example 6.3 radius of the coil is 10 centimeters 10 centimeters equal to 10 power minus 1 meter a number of turns is 500 turns and then resistance I call this as capital R differently written this and that so 2 ohms okay. and it is rotated over 9 to the 180 degrees for example, like in the field, the earth 
the horizontal component of the x magnetic field is like this. Suppose the earth magnetic field is like this, then you have the coil with 50 turns. Okay? So it's like this. So you have a radius R. Right. And now you are rotating it 180 degrees. Then it will go there, then come that side will come here. So that's 180 degrees of rotation is taking place. This is the left magnetic field, the horizontal component of the left magnetic field. Detection. Anyway. Let's see uh, what is going to happen now. Then what's the initial flux? Phi initial is equal to B A cos theta. Okay? So what is B here? B is given the horizontal flux as one component is given to be 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. So 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. So the initial flux is equal to and say phi is this so then phi initial is equal to B is 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. Area is phi into R squared, 10 power minus 1 and the whole square into cos 0. Cos 0 degree, right? Initial aligned. Uh, so that is 1. So this will give you 3 phi into 10 power minus 7 workers. 10 power minus 7 workers. So that's the initial flux. So as it turns 180 degrees, let's see what's going to happen. So for your final flux is equal to same B into 10 power minus 5 Tesla multiplied by area is same 5 into 10 power minus 1 the whole square into now the angle now initially the coil was like that now the coil has become like that so the angle is 180 degrees cos 180 degrees and that gives you minus 3 pi into 10 power minus 7 rivers ok so this is this is it and now what is the aim of induced? The aim of induced is equal to minus delta phi b by delta t. Yeah, because we are finding the average here. So that is going to be equal to minus delta phi will be minus of minus delta f minus uh, phi f minus phi a by uh, t final minus t initial. So this is going to be minus of minus will be 3 pi into 10 to the minus 7 and then minus of minus is going to be plus plus this one again to 3 pi into 10 to the minus, oh, sorry, plus minus 7 so that divided by the initial time is 0, the final time is 0.25 seconds. Yeah. 0.25. 0.25. But this is for one term. This is for one term. Okay, this is for one term. So what is for n terms? It's going to be n times this minus delta phi b by delta t. So that will give me uh, 500 as a number of terms. 3 pi plus 3 pi will give, give me 6 pi into 10 to the minus 7 by 0.25. So that is actually e equal to 3.8 into t 
10 power minus 3 volts. So 3.8 millivolts is the 3.8 millivolts is the EMF generated in this. And uh, what's the current in the load? So the average current is going to be equal to EMF induced divided by the resistance. So that would be 3.8 into 10 power minus 3 volts divided by resistance is 2 ohms. So that is going to be equal to 1.9 into 10 power minus 3 amperes. So EMF induced is actually 3.8 millivolts and current through that circuit is going to be 1.9 milliamps. So this is how you do this problem. Let's do example 6.5 from your textbook. Let me read the problem. There's actually a, a four subdivisions. So we'll address subdivisions one by one. The first one. A closed loop is held stationary in the magnetic field between the north and south poles of two permanent magnets held fixed. Can we hope to generate current in the loop by using very strong magnets? So what is said is that there is a closed loop of wire. Now it is held stationary in the magnetic field between the north and south poles of two permanent magnets held fixed. So they are holding two magnets like this and, uh, and when between these two magnets the north or one could be north pole the other could be south pole then you are keeping a, a loop in between so the loop is also stationary and uh, the magnets are also stationary now the question is can we have an emf induced in this by using powerful magnets no it doesn't depend on the the power of the magnet if it is if the magnets are going to be stationary there has to be a relative motion between the magnets and the loop or at a fundamental level the magnetic flux through the loop must change the change could happen either through relative motion or by varying uh, the magnetic field itself like if you have a coil or something and the magnetic field is produced by a coil then by changing the current in that coil then you can change the magnetic field produced by that coil and if the loop is kept in that magnetic field and then the loop can generate electricity so that's the uh, only uh, time electricity uh, will be induced so emf will be in, in, induced in a loop if the loop and the uh, the magnets are not moving but otherwise you have to there has to be a, a relative motion between the loop and then the magnets the idea is that the magnetic flux through the loop must change for it to induce an electric field or the electromotive force or the potential so the answer to this question is no you can do that the second question uh, b subdivision is this a closed loop moves normal to the constant electric field between the plates of a large capacitor is a current induced in the loop when it is wholly inside the region between the capacitor plates Two, when it is partially outside the plates of the capacitor, the electric field is normal to the plane of the loop. So, again, this question, if you look at it, there is a capacitor. This is one plate of the capacitor, this is the other plate of the capacitor. So, you have charged it. So, there is an electric field between the capacitor. So, this may have positive charge and this may have negative charge. So, there would be an electric field between the plates. Now you are going to take a loop and maybe like you are going to drop it. So the loop is going to enter it, enter this field, the electric field. So there is electric flux. 
the question asked is will there be an emf induced in the lobe no clearly not whether it is partially into the field or or like fully into the field this will not create an emf the reason being this is not a magnetic flux this is electric flux so an emf can be induced only when the magnetic flux changes not when the electric flux changes so this cannot happen in both the cases whether it is partially in the field or uh, it's fully in the field in neither case will there be an induced emf because the flux is electric flux not magnetic flux emf can be induced only when the magnetic flux changes part d is this predict the polarity of the capacitor in the situation described by figure 6.9 so this is it the magnet here So this is north, this is south, and this is south, and this is north. And there is a loop, as you see from here. The loop is like this. The capacitor is connected. Yeah. So it's like this. You can see it. Okay. So the loop is like this. The capacitor is on this side. The loop is like that. The capacitor is on this side, so you can see. The perspective will tell you that the loop is like this. Okay, the capacitor is on the other end of the loop. See, so that is that is that's how the picture is. We go to this. So this is A and this is B. And what happens is that they are moving the magnets in this direction. This is moving. moving this move towards that, and this is also move towards the loop. So now the question is, what would be the polarity of the capacitor? You can you can treat this to be a an open circuit. Capacitor is basically an open circuit, right? So you have two plates. So there's an there's an open circuit there. Anyway, so now look at the flux. Uh, what about the flux of this? Because north will go like that, and then it will be like this, right? So like this. Like this. So basically, the flux is flux through this is in this direction due to this magnet. And what about this? The north will be out like that, and south is going to be like this. Okay. So it's going to be like this. This is it. Okay. Notice that the flux is, you know, uh, entering into the south pole, and here the flux is coming out of the north pole. So effectively, you can say that the flux. Is going through the loop like that. Okay. Okay. So it's like this. Now I am bringing both the magnets here, but this is north pole, so this field is in this direction, and the south pole, this field is in this direction. You see, the field lines of both the magnets are the same direction. Now I am bringing them here, so which means I am increasing this field uh, magnetic flux. And I'm also increasing this field. So the total flux through this is increasing. And which direction the flux is? The flux is in this direction, and this is increasing because of this motion. So what should you do? Now, as I told you, first step is to find the flux direction. The flux direction is this. And what does it do? It is increasing as you bring both of them increase. Increasing. So, third step, what you should do? Well, if this is going to be a loop, it's a closed loop, then that will produce a current which will oppose the change. The change is increasing, right? So that you have to reduce it. So you have to put the flux in the opposite direction. 
If you need to put the flux in the opposite direction, in which direction should the current flow? The current should be flowing in this direction. It's open circuit now, where you're capacitive. If you close it, there the current will be flowing like this. Down. Which means that this must be positive, this must be negative. If I close it with another piece of wire, then current will flow through like that. So this is positive, this is negative. So plate A will be positively charged and plate B will be negatively charged. And if I join them, then the current will flow in this direction. So this is application of Lenz's law. Hope this is clear to you.